David Frum of The Atlantic magazine is an unbelievably smart guy, probably one of the smartest people in Washington, way smarter than you are. So smart, he qualifies as a wonk, which is another way of saying that David Frum understands policy detail, details you never dreamed existed. He's an expert. So naturally, when Kevin, Devin Kelly murdered 26 people in a Texas church over the weekend, David Frum came forward almost immediately with a tidy solution to mass shootings like this one. Frum shared it, as wonks tend to, on Twitter. Quote, crazy thought. Lifetime gun ban for anyone who raises a hand against a woman or a child, end quote. Wow, that's brilliant. So brilliant that it's been federal law for 21 years. Good job, David Frum, though you're a little late to the policymaking party. Under existing statute, Devin Kelly was not allowed to buy the gun he used. Kelly had been convicted of brutally abusing his wife and infant stepson and received a bad conduct discharge from the Air Force for doing it. Even before that, before his conviction, Kelly had escaped from a mental hospital. All of that clearly disqualified him from purchasing firearms. Unfortunately, incompetent government clerks did not supply that information to the correct federal database. The laws were on the books. The bureaucracy botched it. So what are the lessons of all of this? That the NRA has too much power? That's what they're telling you on cable news and at congressional press conferences this week. But wait, Devin Kelly wasn't an NRA member. The armed citizen who stopped him was. He'd been trained by the NRA in marksmanship and gun safety. And thank God for that. So maybe there's another lesson here. At every turn, the people who claim they will protect you failed. They didn't stop Devin Kelly, they let him buy a gun. Instead, the hero of this story is a middle-aged plumber named Stephen Williford. He ignored basic human instinct and ran toward the sound of gunfire to save people. Williford, by the way, was armed with an AR-15. That's exactly the sort of rifle we've been told must be banned for our sake to keep us safe. And yet Williford shot the murderer twice with that rifle and later chased him in a car until Kelly ran off the road. Only after the rampage was over did the police arrive, and by that point, Kelly was dead. It's an amazing story, but it's not exceptional. About 70% of mass shootings end within five minutes. The average police response time, by contrast, 11 minutes. And yet for some reason, the usual establishment mouthpieces are still giving us the same stupid instructions in case of emergency. Take cover and call authorities. No thanks. It's pretty clear that doesn't work. Now, we're not attacking the police, by the way. We're just acknowledging what's obviously true. Cops can't be everywhere. When things fall apart, you are on your own. Your safety is your responsibility. That's the iron law of life. It never changes. So why is the modern left still telling us that we have no right to protect ourselves? Why are people who have taxpayer-funded bodyguards demanding that the rest of us disarm immediately? We could speculate about motive, but what's the point? They're either lying or they're stupid. It doesn't matter. Either way, they are wrong. Ignore them. Mark Glay is the former executive director of Every Town for Gun Safety, and he joins us tonight. Mark, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Um, in addition to being a horrifying tragedy, the shooting on Sunday seems to blow up every basic assumption of gun control. So it was the government that allowed this to happen. Existing gun laws would have stopped this, but they weren't enforced because the bureaucracy is incompetent. And the only person who rode to the rescue is a private citizen armed with a gun that you guys would like to ban. So why doesn't this make you rethink your life's work? Well, first of all, um, I'm really glad that guy was there. I think everybody ought to stipulate that it was good that a good guy with a gun happened to stop this guy. But there have been 377 mass shootings this year in the United States. Right. A good guy generally is not there. Plus, if you ask police chiefs whether it makes sense to have more guns in a shootout rather than fewer, almost inevitably, even if there's a good guy with a gun, it's civilians that they end up shooting because these are confusing situations. Better to go upstream and make it harder for everybody to get assault weapons weapons than it is to rely on a good guy. It would be guy. interesting for you guys to do, I know you'd never do this, but to do an analysis of accidental shootings by police departments. They're very, very common, very common, and people are, are injured by them. It's um, true. Right, it is true. I've seen the numbers. Um, but it doesn't change the core facts, which are these, and I just said them. In the average mass shooting, 70 percent of mass shootings last five minutes. The average police response time is more than twice that. It's not an attack on the police, it's just there aren't that many police in this country. Right. So asking the average person to put his life or his family's lives at the mercy of law enforcement, wait for law enforcement to come, is insane. Well, I, look, I think you would concede that we basically have a choice here. 
you can arm everybody in the hopes that we'll shoot them out and the good guys ultimately will win more often than they lose, or you can address the fact that this doesn't happen in any other industrialized country in the world, and it's because we go upstream to the problem and make guns really hard to get. I would rather do the but latter. But it's actually the not, I mean, that's a huge assumption, as we've discussed many times, and as Angus King, the liberal senator from Maine, explained today on television, there are plenty of places with enormously high rates of gun ownership with basically no violent crime, and Maine is one of them, Wyoming's another. So I don't accept your premise, but the truth is we don't have a choice because we have millions upon tens of millions, hundreds of millions of firearms in this country, and unless we take them away, and I assume you're not proposing that because you get a civil war in about 20 minutes, you have to deal with the reality of the existence of those firearms, period, don't you? you I do, and that's, that's kind of the argument the NRA makes, which I think is a little bit ironic. They created a culture in which well, gun, I mean, guns I mean, are celebrated. Look, who cares about the NRA? I'm saying that's, I'm not here on behalf of the NRA. I'm just saying that's a true, that's a true point. Yeah, but you know, it's so, like, what's the answer? It's ironic to create a situation in like, which there are that many guns out fire, there. Right? It's like the NRA, it's just a talking point. Let's, like, what do you do about the fact there are hundreds of millions of weapons? Do you want to take them away? Simple question. I think we ought to do what Australia did. Take I them away. I think we ought to basically have the government buy them back. Uh, but not buy them back. It took them away. Well, they were required to buy them back. But they okay, did we're, unfortunately, that they we're out of time. I wish we'd started with this. How long would it take before there was a civil war in this country? For real? I, don't, I, I think that's overstated. No, but do you, you think there wouldn't be widespread violence if the government tried to take people's guns away? I actually don't. I think most people would be good citizens You're and wrong. say, let's save You're lives. Wrong. Good citizens, yeah. Good citizens. Comply, obey, or you're not a good citizen. Yeah. Whoa, we got to do. I hope you'll come back. Of course. Thank you for being honest enough to admit your real agenda. I Thank appreciate you. that.